Hi, Simone. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. You? Good. You're not seeing things. Betsy's in Nassau. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's hanging with pirates. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I should start the introduction first. So it's Kim and Simone from the Fleece and Harmony Knitting and Crochet Podcast. We actually have quite a lot of crochet this time. We do. Yeah. So welcome to the crocheters and the bunch. And this is episode 144. I forgot to change it on this agenda, but it is 144 and it's March 29th if you're watching it on the day that it's published. Uh, as usual, we're recording on the Tuesday before, so mm -hmm. we're gonna that will be relevant as we go because we don't have some of the stuff here, so we're inserting going to insert things. Yeah. And um, the way that the podcast is going to go this week is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about farm and other life. Yep. Because Simone had a little adventure this morning on her run. And uh, we will um, then talk about our projects. So we, I have a finished object. Yes, you do. And then I've taken one out of the archives. So that's uh, that's going to be fun. And you're finishing up two projects. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a shop update. And you want to um, stay tuned for that. Yeah, because we've got something special on the shop update. Uh, we're going to, going to uh, do another segment of the nitty gritty, which mm -hmm. is when we talk about like kind of the technical aspects of our knitting. And we have a really good topic this time that's very apropos for some of the projects that we've yeah. completed. It's about yarn chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about the, the fire festival and we'll end the segment as usual with the harmony part. And uh, this week, I think it's going to be a walk in the woods, but nice. who we never know for sure until I sit down and actually do the editing. Okay, so this is being recorded, as I said, on what is today, March 26th? 26th. Yep. And 2024, and we're recording in our yarn shop, Fleece and Harmony, in our woolen mill, on our sheep farm in Belfast, PEI. So welcome to new friends and old. That's right. And so now you're going to have to ask all the questions. Oh, no. Betsy always asks the questions. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy, we need you. <laughs> yeah. So as we said, Betsy is um, on a family vacation and she's traveling to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. which is great considering that we had another winter storm, sort of, but it kind of didn't amount to much. No. No. It lasted for like, what, six hours? Just as we predicted in the last yeah. episode. Yeah. Right, right after St. Patrick's Day, yeah. sort of. Anyway, we uh, I saw a picture. Somebody posted a picture on um, on Facebook because they were complaining about the fact that we had cold weather and mm -hmm. we actually got rain. Yeah, there was snow, a little bit of snow, and then sleet, and then rain. Yeah, and people were complaining that we thought winter was over. I don't know why people would think that winter would be over in March around here. It never is. No, no, you, you're kidding yourself. But they picture. The famous 2015, they picture, showed a picture of March 17th on 2015, and um, the the person that posted it has a little shop here, and you could barely, it was up to the, the snow was up to the windows of the of the shop, so she was looking out from her kitchen window to, to her shop, and it's, uh, it, that, we definitely don't have that. No. Actually, the sheep are eating, still eating grass. Yeah. They're now, loving the grass. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure how much they're finding, but um, I actually, when I was feeding the horses the other day, saw a few little spikes of green, mm. which is just means that the winter didn't kill everything, I would yeah. say, but because there's, it hasn't definitely hasn't been warm enough to grow grass. But I saw snowdrops. Did you? I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the first sign of spring. It is. Yeah. So. Um, it's close to um someone's foundation okay on my running route and i noticed them a week ago but now i think that maybe the crocuses are coming up oh, too okay. and then i saw like little nubbins of daffodils oh wow so okay. we're it's on coming. way it's coming yeah i have a little naturalized patch of crocuses down by the horse pasture and um that's what i always watch for but mm -hmm. when the crocuses come out and for if they're just in the lawn it's hard to tell the difference from them and grass at first, but yeah. then one day you come out and there's just little flowers, little flowers there. So we'll look forward to that. Yes. So if some of you don't know, Simone um, gets up at the, what do you call it, spiral fart? <laughs> at the crack of dawn 
<laughs> and run and runs every day. But now she's actually running more because she made a pledge to do yeah something and made a mistake with yeah. my math. I had a math issue. Yes. So you had an adventure this morning. I did. Um, I went down, I, I took my usual running route and I like to go take pictures whenever I hit the beach. And when I hit the beach this morning, I'm taking photos of Gordon's Island and enjoying the sunrise. And I turned around to leave the beach and I don't know who was more scared, the fox or me, <laughs> because he kind of blended right in with the sand and the grass wow. and he just kind of jumped like this. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> and we How close stared at each you? other. Um, it, it was about six feet apart. Oh, wow. So okay. I was standing really still and watching the sun, and the fox was doing just fox things, I guess. Yeah. So we both startled each other, and, yeah, it, it took us a minute. It was like, oh, my goodness, I don't know what to do right now, and then the fox took off. Oh, yeah. he wasn't sticking around. No. To find out. No. So you didn't get a chance to take a picture. No. 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 So how, how many kilometers are you running every um, day? This morning, it was just, like, a little bit over six. Oh. Yeah. Okay, nothing. But <laughs> in May, it's going to be 10 a day, five days a week. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about why you're doing it? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I signed up for the Million Reasons Run to raise money for the IWK. Right. And you get to set whatever hospital charity you want. Uh, it's a children's hospital. So you, mm. you get to choose from a list. And then you get to set however many kilometers right. you want to run. And I had a math issue that day and I was like, 200, that's only like 25 kilometers a week. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I can do that after not having run this winter. Oh. <laughs> well, you're out every day. Anyway. I am. Uh, yeah, I, I rocked instead of ran this winter. Yeah, so, and how much weight did you have in your rucksack? What it's you... between 23 and 35 pounds. Yeah, yeah. so, wow. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, I had a little math issue, but anyway, I, I, what I decided... What did you I'm intend gonna... it? <sighs> 200 sounds like a good number. Yeah, but... and I went back and I checked what I did last year, and I ended up running 178 last oh, year. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, that's not that bad. I can yeah, do this. but when you actually brought it, broke it down day by day. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, oops. So it's like 6.5K a, a day for the entire month of May, but if I want to take rest days, I have to like beef it up on some oh. days. So. Do you take rest days? Not really. No. Okay. No. I just wondered. <laughs> Every morning there's a beautiful picture on her feed, <laughs> on her Instagram feed. Yeah, I'm so, not really a rest day kind of person. I have to get inside for my brain in the mornings. Yeah. 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 Take yeah. my brain for a walk. Cleansing, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I uh, I actually I wasn't gonna say to say this, but I was sometimes I make jokes to myself and I find myself hilarious. Yep. But the other day I ran from the shed over to the horse pasture and I said, "Oh, I'm gonna tell Simone I ran a hundred meters today." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes you think of the time that you and Betsy were talking about them being the running family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys yeah. crack me up. Yeah. <laughs> So, but running in rubber boots is actually not, not yeah, great. That's a at my skill age. in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. So, and then on the farm, hmm. we had a little bit of a sad a sad thing. So, yeah. um, we've been talking about this. I don't know if we talked about it last time, about the rabbits. I think we talked a little bit yeah. about boy bunny Ernest. Yes. So, Ernest, yeah. yeah so, the one of my bunnies had a little issue with his boy parts mm -hmm. didn't they didn't look good so I took him to the vet. he was a little swollen I took him to the vet not to go into too many details and um anyway he's on the mend he's fine yeah. he's fine but when I was there talking to the to the vet I was she was asking how old he was and I said he's eight and she said oh she said well that's getting up there for mm -hmm. a rabbit I don't know. She was setting me up that maybe it was something a little bit more serious turns out it was bladder infection so yeah. just some antibiotics and he was all he was all set in a day or two he was looking back to normal and that's acting good. back to normal so that's a good news story yep but she was telling me she said um she said i the eight to ten years is the lifespan of ra a span of a rabbit mm -hmm. and she said i rarely see any rabbits on my table more more than ten so i was doing the math in my head because we've got two that are ten mm -hmm which seem to be doing fine. Yeah. And then we have all of the ones that we got at once, which are eight yeah. now. So I'm preparing myself 
that things are going to start happening when when as they're getting older and the worst came true the other day that Paige actually was just dead <laughs> I can't sugarcoat it she was just there just laying there and I kind of just shook her and she was gone um, and you may remember from episodes way, way, way back mm -hmm. when we, um, she was probably just a year or old or so, she got in a fight with the other rabbits and she had cut her eyelid and we had made a big deal about it because we had taken her to the vet hospital here in Prince Edward Island. There's a, there's a veterinary college here and they mm -hmm. have a hospital. It's hard to find somebody to look after rabbits. No one, vets don't really want to do it. So there's not that many. I think if you look at them sideways, they can die. So it doesn't, yeah. it's not really good. For, for, they don't take anesthetic very well. And yeah. they're kind of a little bit fussy. Anyway, um, we had taken her to the ABC. And it just so happened the day that we had her there, there was a traveling um, optologist. Is that what you mean? Opto well, not an optometrist. Opto opto I don't know. The doctor, an eye doctor. Ophthalmologist. There right. And um, from the University of Guelph. So she was there. And uh, they said, oh, you're in luck. We have the expert here. And um, anyway, the expert said that, yes, we can do plastic surgery on the eyelid. And there doesn't seem to be involving the tear duct anywhere. And uh, we were like, okay, so what does that cost? And she said, oh, it'll be around $1,500. I said, well, this is okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think we're going to do that. So um, we actually went to the drugstore and bought some Seri strips. And mm -hmm. we were pretty confident because Paige was, didn't mind being handled. Yeah. So we took uh, Ken's razor that he trims things with because it was nice and fine. Yeah. And we just shaved around her eye. And within six days, it was healed yeah. with just putting steri strips. And they gave us some some pain medication in case it was, but it was really like it, it just was like it was just slit. There was no infection or anything. Yeah. And six days of steri strips, which cost us four ninety nine. Yep. And she was all set. And she lived in the shop for a while too, didn't she? She did live in the shop because we didn't want her mixing it up with the other rabbits while we, yeah. while we, um, made sure that she was, that her eye was going to be okay. And uh, so that's it. So she's had a little bit of an adventure, but um, now she's, uh, Ken found a nice tree in the wood lot and nice. she's buried, buried under there. So she's still on the farm. <laughs> anyway, so we're down, down, down one. Bunny. Yeah. And somebody asked me, oh, are you going to get more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're a lot of work. Angora rabbits are really really cute mm -hmm. and they're super sweet not to each other all the time but they're they look really adorable but it's a lot of work yeah it's a lot of hair yeah and you have to keep on top of it yeah i and, had looked into bunnies at one point in time yeah. and i thought not yet yeah <laughs> not till the kids are bigger <laughs> yeah yeah you need kids to brush them yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you can get them to brush them <laughs> So anyway, so that was a bit of sad news, but we've been farmers long enough now that we know there's always good and bad yeah. news. So we uh, said goodbye to Paige. Mm. Yeah. And other than that, though, everybody's everybody's fine, and there's really not much going on. We're just waiting for spring. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all we have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing the sheep out back because whenever yeah. we're in the mill, if you're over by the picker, you can see them right out the back window right. and they're having a grand old time. Yeah, they're, they're, actually, through. they're actually not eating much hay. They're they're actually getting food out there. I don't know. It doesn't look like there's, it's not like it's lush green grass or anything. Yeah. But they, and they're hilarious because it's like somebody will see something over on this side and they just start motoring in that direction. And then all the other sheep are like, wait a minute, there's something good over there. And then they all have to run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you know a little bit, you familiarize yourself a little bit with sheep psychology. They're pretty easy to maneuver around because they're very predictable. <laughs> but for prey animals, I find they're surprisingly curious. Mm. So somebody had a dog out at the, there's a, an old, um, Folks home, or I don't know, that's not probably the right John word. John Gill's Lodge. <laughs> John Gill's Lodge. Seniors residence. 
and uh, somebody a visitor there had a dog that was that was running around mm -hmm. on their property but you can see there they they watch the sheep yeah all the time the the uh, residents there and uh they the sheep were all right over at the fence with their noses like watching mm -hmm. so a canine and a sheep you should probably run be running in the opposite direction do you think <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, they're all, I guess yeah. they feel pretty secure. Yeah. Yeah. They anyway, they have it pretty good here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> they've, they've, uh, they keep the fences pretty secure. So no one, we haven't had any bed. I don't want to jinx that. Yeah. <laughs> there with the sheep. <laughs> okay. So I think it's time to talk about our projects. Yes. And we'll start off by what we're wearing. Okay. Then you have a crocheted shawl on. I do. And I actually don't remember the name of it. Oh. Okay, we'll put a title. Yeah, I'll have to, be I'll able have to, to find it. it. Uh, but I'll take it off. And I love it. the tassels. Yeah. The tassels are fantastic. So you might recognize this particular yarn here. Yeah. It, it's Point Prim Sock. Yes, in Bramble. <laughs> in Bramble. Yeah. And then I had some um, linen quill from okay. Curl Soho. This is the gray in yep. Bramble again. Uh, this was just some stash, unnamed stash. And then this was chestnut, chestnut <laughs> rim sock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then more of the linen quill. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. So um, in the nitty gritty okay. section, we're going to talk about yarn chicken. Yep. And so um, you're the master of using up all your yarns yep. in beautiful projects in beautiful ways. So when we talk in that section... I want to ask you, so don't let me forget, okay. I want to ask you about how you decide if you're going to have enough yarn mm. to do your project. Yeah. Okay. Because um, with this uh, design, was was it striped originally or did you just make it striped? Okay. Yeah. Because I was playing yarn chicken. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about that in that section, in the yep. nitty gritty section. Okay. And I'm wearing my tungsten, which is knit in uh, Rowan Felta Tweed and was in Magazine 70. And uh, I forget who the designer was. I've said it a thousand times probably over the time that I made it, but I'll put a title down here. And uh, I'm thinking Chloe Thurlow, I think. If it's not Chloe Thurlow, <laughs> I will put a title. And uh, it's knit in uh, Rowan Felt a Tweed, as I said. And I changed the colors around. So, but I have a finished object. You do? Yes. So my trite is finished. And I'm not showing it here live because I finished it um, on Sunday night, kind of late. And I soaked and blocked it uh, yesterday on Monday. And it's not quite dry yet. So I'm going to be showing a picture. So you may be hidden now. And there's a <laughs> picture. And if it's dry before the afternoon is out, then maybe uh, I'll get you to take a picture of me in it. Yep. So it turned out beautifully i think if i have to say yes, so myself it did and um it exactly what i wanted i did try it on because it's bottom up and so while the the neck wasn't fully closed i just we had a long um interchangeable needle so i just put it on so i know yeah. that it fits just the way i had wanted it to but i think it's going to be pretty warm yes yeah so yeah. the intention was that i was going to wear it today but i actually had a change of clothes ready because then I knew that I was going to be too too warm it's pretty warm yeah but it turned out beautifully I lost at yarn chicken so that that also prompted our discussion in the nitty-gritty yes and um, I'll try to explain uh, what we what we did and what I could have done to mitigate the situation but um, the it worked out okay you couldn't tell nope where I had I to, couldn't tell at all. No dye lot left in the morning. I thought she I won it, yarn chicken. Yeah, she thought I won, but I yeah. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I and there's a reason why. So I'm gonna talk about that. So I'm really happy to have that done. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. And that fabric is something, something else. else. Yeah. yeah. The only little thing it's so it's point prim sock yarn in Northumberland blue and kids silk haze in heavenly is mm. color. And um, you just have to, I find that you just have to be uh, a little bit careful with the lace when you um, have the kid silk case because it was easy not to get both both mm. yarns in. Yeah. I was very thankful for my Chiagra needles. Yes. 
I like those sharp tips. Yeah, the yeah. Real, you need really sharp ch tips if you're doing that, especially the lace. The stockinette wasn't a, a problem, but when mm -hmm. you have to twist and and um, I was doing um, the one move or one step slip slip knit from Patty Lines, which means that you go into the first stitch and you twist around to the back and go into the second stitch and then take out, then pull through both at the same time to get the slip a left leaning decrease mm. and you need to be have sharp points to do that yes absolutely. have you done that before i've tried and i was using dull pointed needles and it didn't oh. go very well yeah no no and you need sharp yeah. sharp needles so that's it we have a couple sets of the forte chiagos too if people don't like the stainless steel and prefer mm. wood and they want the deluxo Oh, they're amazing. Ne needles uh, in your dreams, then we do have a couple of sets of those uh, yeah. those left as well. But I don't know. Can't beat those Chiago tips. I know. Yeah. There's something like, special. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. So the trite is done, and that means that I had to pull out my other projects that were sleeping. Yes. But let's talk about your jasmine shawl first. Okay. Mm. More crochet. Yes. So I made a little bit of progress. You just said go. you didn't get much crafting done. No, yeah. no. Um, I don't know. It was like the twilight zone. Oh. I just kind of ripped a lot of stuff out over the past two weeks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I would start it and then not be able to read directions properly. Oh, and okay. have to like rip it out <laughs> five or six times. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So it was just one of those bad brain weeks. And, yeah. you know, the math issue that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, oh boy. continued. Yeah. 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 So it happens. It does. You have weeks like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I made a little bit of progress. I did end up ripping back a couple of times here just because I wasn't paying attention. And my stitch count kind of went catawankus. Yeah. But that's fine. Yeah, so this is the Jasmine Tea Shawl mm. by Red Teapot Atelier. Right. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm actually really enjoying this project. It's it's fun. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to work up as long as you pay attention to your pattern. Right. You know, it's it's funny how you just you create your own problems sometimes. Yeah, like absolutely. in in um the trite uh I was going to say recipe pattern. Mm. They, there was a part of it where Kate Davies, Kate Davies patterns are impeccably written. I have to yeah. say, she says, read this whole section before you start to knit. Yeah. I skimmed over it. What, what do I have to knit? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, when she says, read this section before you have to knit, <laughs> she, means it. <laughs> she means it. So I went ahead and did the, the repeat, the pattern repeat. And it took me about, I don't know, four or five rows before I was like, you know, you have that niggly feeling and yes. I was just like, something's not right with this. It's not the numbers. Cause she's always, she always gives you instruction <clears throat> to the very last uh, stitch of the mm -hmm. yarn. So she just doesn't say knit till the end. She tells you like how many stitches you're going to knit. Yeah. And I ended up with not the right, there was Number. something like some left over that I was just knitting. Yeah. So, but she had different instructions for every side yeah. or size, but they were on the other page. When I turned over the page, I was like, <laughs> so I had to rip back. <laughs> so anyway, that's just not following instructions is yeah. not great. And yeah. sometimes that just happens because like you'll be reading through something and because there are multiple instructions for the sizes, you're just like, oh, yeah, well, I've got this. No, you don't have this. Yeah. <laughs> so Not many unless times. you're a mind reader. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Get fit by that. Yeah. But, so, yeah, this is this is not one of those. It's pretty straightforward. You just no. actually have to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's sometimes also an issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's lovely. That's going to be nice. Yeah. And I think um, your next project, you haven't, we haven't showed it yet. No. You talked about it in the last episode, I, I think. I did. Yeah. Make sure I don't drop it here. Okay, and now you have a new Latin name for a plant to add to your yes. repertoire. Agapanthus. Yeah. <laughs> and Just this is from... Fun saying it. It is. Yeah. This is from um, edition three. It doesn't look like much yet. Yeah. Um, so this is a Rowan pattern yeah. in uh, by Quail Studio, I think, right? right? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, in the book called Edition 3. So they started mm-hmm. a new series of books. They had the mode collections. Mm-hmm. They're up to 10 now, that they're, and they're all great. Yeah. And now they started a new series called Edition. So Edition 1 and 2, and this yeah. is Edition 3 for the summer. Yeah. So this is hand-knit cotton. It's going to be a little cotton tank top. Yeah. And just simple ribbing. Yeah. I actually really love the hand-knit cotton. Do you? I do. Um, have you knit with Rowan cotton before? I have. Um, I've knit with both Summer Light and Summer Light DK. Oh, okay. Uh, and now the hand-knit cotton. And I do like the hand-knit cotton. It's got a little bit of heft to it. Yes. But yeah. it feels like it's going to be a nice fabric to wear mm-hmm. as well. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, pardon all my ends and stuff like that. But So how has it worked? From the top so okay. you you start from the top and then you increase in a certain manner and then you do the other part and then you join them together and then you do the same thing for the back okay and then you sew this top for the yep. the straps okay and then you work it all the way down and then add a nice edging i'm looking forward to the edging because right now this is driving me a little bit bananas totally. yeah. yeah so this will be this looks a little risque yeah <laughs> well it is a little bit yeah sexy yeah the picture but uh but you do have an edging that goes up so that gives a little bit more height yeah yeah and i always wear like sports tops underneath so oh, do you? it doesn't okay. really matter yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice everything will be covered <laughs> <laughs> i'm not worried it's not, <laughs> not too pr- prudish but it's yeah. uh it yeah. is, does look like quite a dv yeah yeah so it, it's cute yeah and the model doesn't have anything on underneath it. No, no, no. and she's definitely covered, fuller figured. Yeah, she's fuller in figured. reference to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's she, looked, she fills it out better. She That's fills it out. Yeah, she does. For, yeah. yeah, I've showed a picture by now. I'm yeah. sure after all this. So yes, it looks lovely and yeah. it feels really nice. It does. I really like the Hannah cotton. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so hand knit mm. cotton is so the the thicknesses of the cotton yarns from Rowan is the summer light four ply is the finest. Mm-hmm. Then you have the DK. They would probably call this a worsted, I suppose. I think so, but it's quite thick. Yeah, yeah. So um, the hand knit cotton is like, and I'm glad to see that you're knitting something with it because I have I haven't knit with it before. Mm. So um, people, some people use it for dishcloths, yeah, stuff because it's the thickest one, but it's kind of nice. Yeah, for dishcloths, like <laughs> their cottons are really the, nice. I love the feel of the fabric, and sometimes I struggle with um, plant fibers because I find they're really slippery. Yeah, and my hands get tired yeah. whenever I knit with them. But I don't, I don't find that with this at all. Yeah, and it I feels think it's very because it's got a little bit more texture. Yeah, to it, so it, it's more like a. It, it doesn't feel like wool, but it's got the same kind of you know, texture to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy on your hands. Yeah. That's how you, I guess that's all we have to say about it. It's easy on your hands. I don't really feel like I have to worry so much about it sliding off my needles and things like that. Right. Right. And, um, like all of, I would assume we're going to find out because you'll finish it, but I would assume that, uh, like the other cottons, they, once your project is done and you've blocked it Mm -hmm. and soaked it or whatever and washed it, it actually kind of, turns into this beautiful soft yes yes delight and i am very much looking forward to washing and blocking this because i do find from my experience with um plant fibers that before you wash and block it it's a lot like lace it it can look a little knobbly yeah 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 Yeah. it's true but my cornwallis it just it just was once you wash it it's like magic yeah exactly yeah as we've like stolen before the yeah. virtue, but... <laughs> all right so, so that's lovely yeah i'm i'm excited about that and i've got a little ways to knit but it's just around yeah. and around i go so it's perfect for my brain lately okay great yeah. excellent <laughs> all right and did you do any modifications or none none oh, wow. none okay that's the first time no. ever i think i think that i just needed a very straightforward right. Especially after finishing palette cleanser. Yes, exactly. After finishing the chestnut, I was like, okay, I need some 
some simple yes. patterns to work yes. on for a little bit. Yes. Yeah. But wow, that chestnut was something else. Although I have been looking at the Marie Wallens again, trying to decide which one I want to do next. <laughs> Nice. It's an addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's, that's a good addiction to have. Yeah, exactly. So now that I finished my trite, I got out my tune. Yes. Okay. So tune is done in, um, this is actually four ply, summer light four ply. The colors I'm using are, it's navy ink and blossom. So it's like a navy and a very light pink. And it's coming along. So Simone completed this last summer. I'm getting ready for this summer. So <laughs> it was stored in a bag for a while. I do love the feel of the fabric, though. Yeah, but it's different than yours. Yep. Yours is much more drapey. Yeah. So I just had a... Um, so I made adjustments because I went down a needle size because mm -hmm. I tend to like a denser fabric. So that's what I did. But I just had a little panic last night. And I'm going to ask you the question while we're here. So I've started the decreases around the arms. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm worried that now because I made um, a smaller, I made a bigger size and to get a smaller size than what the pattern was, the number of stitches. Yeah. But I'm worried now about the number of rows that I'm following because I'm wondering if it's going to be too tight under my arm. Yeah. You know I was I mean? worried about that too, and I did add some extra. Um, I found a tank top that I like the fit of and yeah. I measured. Oh, okay. That's what I'm going to do then. Yeah. Because that's what, so you can just, as you go up, you can just add a little bit of length. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's so it just means add. that you wait to do the next shaping. You can just do a, a few more rows in between okay. the the neck shaping and the shoulder shaping. Right. So because this shaping. looks a little bit short to me. Yeah. I've only got like um, three or four more decreases to do, and it looks yeah. kind of short. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do that. But I like it. That's yeah. nice. I like the colors a lot, yeah. too. And the other, um, let me see. This is not really very good because I get, oh, it does roll, though, when you're... Yep, but you don't have to worry yeah. so much about it because whenever they... They There's have like a nice little edge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and then the other alteration that I made was that I did a pico edge because it was just a plain edge on the bottom, a yeah. garter edge. So I actually did, uh, maybe I'll get you to just to take a picture yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe pin it so you can take a picture. So I just did that, a pico edge. And I have to say, I really like that modification and I think it will serve you well because yeah. I found that with the edging the way it was written I wanted a little bit more length right and I wanted something that would lay a little bit more flat right and it rolls up even it though does, it's, it's the only right I think it's four rows of garter yeah it was very it's tiny not enough yeah and yeah I probably would have if I had have thought it through either done something like that yeah. or added additional rows yeah 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 okay so um we'll keep this in mind for the nitty-gritty thing because we're going to see what happens because this is um, not four rows. It's many more rows than four on sm in smaller stitches. So yeah. it uses up a bit more yarn. See where we're going with that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the yarn, um, like I've got the, I have the required yarn for the size that I want it to do, but I'm just uh, don't know. Um, if I still have the same dye lot mm -hmm. in the navy, especially because I'm now it's it was even number of balls for both. I think, I think was so. it four and four or something so. like that for my size. So this is this is how much pink I have left, and this is how much navy I have left. So I think I'm going to need another navy. So hopefully I have a dye lot. Yeah, but if I don't, there's <laughs> I'll have to think ahead a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. And then. Uh, what else do we have you other than your spinning? That's that it. Was it. Yeah. yeah. So now that I was finished my um, trite, and I can't call it trite sometimes, trite, some I have no idea. I don't idea. know how to say it. Yeah. So now that I finished that, and I'm going to, I'm just, I'm not going to start another sweater until I finish my tune. Yeah. And then that, until I finish my tune, I don't think. So. <laughs> There's only one tune that I would be finishing. 
and uh, then I have to choose a new project for mm -hmm. knitting. But I'm not sure. I have no idea. I haven't even. Uh, I actually saw something a long time ago, but I'm just not sure I want to get into it. It's that trellis waistcoat. Yes, I knew where you were going. Uh, I'm going to show That's a, a big temptation. It. it is a big temptation. Yeah, yeah, we have the perfect yarn for it. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that might be the next the next thing. A customer actually purchased the yarn from us to to do it, and when I saw it, I was like, "Oh yeah, yep. nice." Okay, so I didn't realize. So now I dug out my wallflowers for. So I'm going to start crocheting again. So this was in. I can't even say it was in the whatever the the corner. It was in deep hibernation. <laughs> so now you know the sun's out. Time to bring it out. But I didn't realize you hadn't seen this no. live. No. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So that means it's been a long time since I worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the center part. I'll show a picture. I'll actually show a picture of Betsy's because Betsy finished hers right on time. Of course she did. Of course. She did. <laughs> yes. Very encouraging that yes. it can be done. But anyway, so... Um, the only difference is when Betsy did her, so the idea of this project is that you have this dark center and then you have light and then the dark edging is mm -hmm. the way that Sue Matten from the Mercery, who designed this, envisioned it. Yeah. Betsy did the opposite. She yeah. did the light on the outside and the dark inside. So Betsy's color schemes are, were obviously Betsy's, bright yeah. and really nice colors. I went with more muted. And as Betsy was making hers, I was like, I was like, <laughs> I she had crocheter's regret. Yeah, well, I just thought that I should have chosen another, like another palette. But um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Well, it's a bit muted. But that's okay, because all these pinks just yell Kim. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I think my, I think the part where I was more, that I'm more... Um, concern about is this this peach color here mm. it's not a color I try to put that in as something to outside of my comfort, comfort zone. zone yeah so I'm still not comfortable with it but Betsy said you need to wait because when the dark edging goes mm. around on the outside and you've got this this kind of scheme happening there she said it changes it you have to you have to kind of Sue spends a lot of time in the course talking about the color choices mm. and um well just being able to play with color right. and um it, that the and then you have to you know feel good about the your colors that you're doing and that if yeah. you did all of the she has a couple exercises for choosing the colors and stuff like that mm -hmm. if you've done that and we're happy with the selection that you made you just need to stick to it need to ride end, it out and ride it out yeah. so that's what I'm going to do yeah and um so this is so this is the main center part the next thing to do is, and you can already see it changes yes. there because now you've got like red and and the dark, a brighter blue. Yeah. So this is the next um, round that goes around um, with these these brighter colors as well. So you can see that it's going to change. The mood of it is going to change. Yeah. I think it's so, going to be lovely, and the peach was a good choice. No, thank you, Samoa. <laughs> no. It's I really do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's not, I mean, I can't make everything in red and purple. <laughs> I did, I did go with purple and the red is coming up, but yeah. I just, I had to do something a little bit different. So we'll see. No, I like it goes. a lot. Yeah. And yeah, when, once you get more attached to it too, I think you'll probably change. Well, now it starts to get framed with these brighter colors. Yeah. So, so that's where Betsy was talking me through it is she said, well, all my pop was at the beginning. Yeah. And she said, then she's at the end of hers, it was more muted. Yeah. So she was finding all the joy in, in, the, in middle. the middle. Yeah. And I'm, I'm uh, waiting, wait, for, the joy at waiting the end. for the joy at the end. So <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens. So yeah. in any case, I mean, it's a fantastic project. Yeah. And Sue um, does this with an online course, which I cannot recommend highly enough. It was, it's really, really mm. beautiful the way that she has the course laid out. And um, 
you get uh, an installment every, I think it's every second Friday. It might be every Friday. I think it's every second Friday. Mm. And I literally jumped out of bed at seven o'clock. I could hear my phone at seven because that's where I could hear ding. I got an email and I knew it was this. And I literally would jump out of bed in the morning and go and watch just the, just even watching her tutorial. Mm. She's got beautiful music and oh, nice. she's got like, kaleidoscopes of color happening and it was a pleasure it's a pleasure yeah Yeah, and so well done so sue took a break from uh the wallflowers because she was working on um another project called tessellation nation i think it's called Mm -hmm. which is a new course that she's done so she's just finished the first course live i think she had told she had a on her blog post that she had like 370 people join the the first inaugural one and then she's bringing wallflowers back. So mm-hmm. April 2nd, you have time to register. Wallflowers will be uh, will be coming back soon. And the course is, you don't have to finish it in the time that she does the course. It takes about six months, I think, for the course because mm-hmm. she gives you time to do all of the, um, all of the crochet. But you have access to it forever. So mm-hmm. you don't have to finish it right away. And um, or go at, you can go at your own pace. But um, she, the reason why there's timing of it is that she does live events oh, as well. Cool. So she has live Zoom events during mm-hmm. the course, and she's starting those again. So it starts on April 2nd. You can register now on her, her website. And um, since she started this, I've been um, a stockist for the yarn because I carry all the colors of felt mm-hmm. tweed. And uh, so I will do that again. And there's a, a discount code that is I'll put down here that you can use on my website if you want to buy your yarn from Fleece and Harmony. And you get 10% off if you buy 10 balls or more. Hmm. I think this takes the total is 48 balls or something okay. like that. So you have opportunity to, to buy 10. I have that. to say the felted tweed is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. nice, isn't it? Yeah. it's It has weight. It has weight, but, it has drape, but it also has structure. So yes, it's, exactly. It's a really lovely That's, yeah. fabric. Yeah. And I think Sue, um, so Sue is actually coming to the Fiber Festival. So she did two um, color courses last year, like choosing colors. And it looked like it was really fun because mm-hmm. she had this color, like all of this montage of oh, things with different colors and all, on the floor. I don't know what went on there, but it, I think everybody was kind of, I'm like a fuzzy. Yeah, I actually think it's, uh, I think M must have been on it. <laughs> um, so she, you just play with color. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, it's really um, great for, obviously for this, but also for people that do a lot of color work. Yeah. Like if you ever wonder how Marie Wallen puts all those, like 15 colors together and stuff like that, this is sort of the same kind of thing mm-hmm. where you have to put a bunch of colors together. So she's, um, it sold out last year. So the Fiber Festival is doing, has two opportunities for you to take that class again in, this year and for the, the, this year's festival. And she's doing a crochet class on joining flowers. Cool. So there's a couple projects that she has. She's got this beautiful capelet with, that has flowers in it. And then there's wall flowers as well. So, um, I guess it would be for joining almost any element, Mm -hmm. really. Yeah. So that's a class at the Fiber Festival. Yeah. So that's that. It's so nice to see this in person. Yeah. I'm really, I'm actually pretty excited about getting, uh, going again. And I think I'm going to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and look (laughs) look at the videos because like I said, it's just so well. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I really enjoy doing it, but I just kind of, um, I don't know. It takes me so long to do anything that it's hard to stay. After the class was over and I was on my own, I didn't have much discipline, I have to say. But <laughs> And then Betsy was finishing hers. So yeah. <laughs> a little bit of an excuse. <laughs> anyway, so that's the wallflowers. And um, you can check out uh, check out the, the Mercery. There'll be a link in the show notes. All right. So shop update. Yes. It's a big one. It is. Yes. So as um, I'd say in every episode, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you will know things first. We usually advertise things uh, first in the newsletter. This time we're kind of, it's a bit of a crunch because the newsletter went out. If you're with us so far, I don't know how many, how long we've been talking, 45 or minutes or an hour. um, You've had the newsletter for an hour. (laughs) 
So I do is let her people hopefully haven't bought everything yet, but if you uh if you want this you need to go pretty quickly and come back. Please come back. But if you need to go to make your purchase for the shop update. So we have um Celtic cashmere. Yes. So we have um done some beautiful colors. So the cashmere comes from uh I can't, can't pronounce the farm name properly, Vinsler Farm in Nova Scotia. So uh, Lisi uh, has the beautiful goats that she combs, hand combs, and we buy her cashmere to put into our Celtic cashmere yarn. So I'm going to give you those. Okay. And we came up with um, seven colors. We change the colors every time we do it. Um, and just to mix it up a bit, we may have repeated one or two, but, um, mostly we, we try to come up with new colors as well. So nice. So we have kind of, the whole thing goes together, but we did kind of dark and light. Uh, the idea here is that, um, all of this soft kind of natural coloring that's really popular right now, we want it to, um, we want it to kind of jump on that bandwagon because it's so comforting mm. these colors um but we also uh wanted to just kind of have a little bit like you've got a little bit of punch as, as well mm. so i'm going to try to name all the colors so because we did some that are different so this one is called fairy ring and this was a color that That's we fairy. uh oh no this is, yeah, this is fairy ring. Okay. So this was one we did with the for the Ryu shawl. Yes. So it's making an appearance here in the Celtic cashmere. And so we'll just maybe put them down as yeah. we go. And this one is called sandstone. Yeah. So that's a new that's a new color. Sandstone. Then we have lilac, which is that one. Lilac. And then uh, or is that lady slipper? No, this is lady slipper. Okay, I'm going to have to rename them all now because I, I'll, I'll do after I do this because I'm bungling this. I'll do a picture all of, with all of them with the colors next to it. <laughs> then you have um, sand. Yes, okay, sand. And we have uh, Northumberland blue, yep. which is the same as what my trite is. And then we have take the fairy. So let's try that again. Take the fairy, Northumberland blue, sand. Sand. Fairy ring. Fairy ring. Sandstone. Sandstone. Lilac. <laughs> Lilac. And Lady Slipper. And Lady Slipper. And we've also picked out Kid Silk Hay's colors that go with them all as mm -hmm. well. So I will list those in the show notes. And we'll take maybe... a picture and yes. kind of pair them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So because they make a beautiful um, combination. Oh, I can't mm -hmm. even imagine how nice. Yeah, those two yes, will be together. It's lovely. Yeah, I just kind of want to cuddle it. And it's a uh, kind of a fingering weight. Yeah, yeah. It's not a light fingering. It's a uh, it's it's, it's a like little a bit sportish. Puppy. Sport yeah, I would sportish. say it's not DK. Yeah, but it's a uh, and I'm I'm just loving this palette. Yeah, it's very soft, and they all go together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the Celtic cashmere, and um, we have quite a big batch but I don't imagine it's going to be here tomorrow <laughs> so by Saturday I'm pretty sure it's not going to be all if things go like how they usually do yeah and speaking of we had natural black sock no just natural black worsted yes gone we so, can't show it the podcast yeah. <laughs> yes. it disappeared yeah so <laughs> last week's newsletter had um, natural black with that we had some lamb black lambs wool mm. that we made into just natural black worsted and it sold out before evening yeah it was on the newsletter so if you don't subscribe to the newsletter and you want to take part in these things then you should subscribe to the newsletter yeah <laughs> all right so the next segment is the nitty-gritty yep all right so I'm going to show the picture of my trite again. And I had ran out of color, uh, ran out of yarn. So at the in the last episode, I think I had weighed the yarn mm -hmm. and thought I might have enough. No. No. So first of all, the chart, I still had I thought that the decreases would have happened faster actually. Mm. So it wasn't like I was on the home stretch just going from the decreases. So I actually had quite a bit lace. If you notice that lace panel, it's quite deep. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have enough. 
And um, I think we had the debate on the podcast, or Betsy and I had it anyway, about the fact that the there was no none left of the die lot that I had. So um, we had the next die lot, but it was slightly different. You could see that it was slightly different. Betsy was reassuring me that you wouldn't be able to tell because of the kids still case, mm -hmm. and it was pretty close, but yeah. it was it was slightly different. I can tell. I you, can't tell. You couldn't tell. No. But I, I knew no where I started it, too. Yeah. So the last podcast, I was debating whether I should stop where I am now and then start alternating. And mm -hmm. I decided not to do that because I just did. <laughs> Don't do as I do. Do as I say. I should. I. But in the end, it worked out because Betsy was right. Yeah. The kids okay's kind of um, models that. And they're so... The, all of our yarns are so tonal that mm -hmm. as long as you're close, it's hard to it's hard to tell really that yeah. you know. Sometimes I, there has been some knitting that I've done that it, there was quite a difference, but this was looked pretty close. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I thought you won. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I won because I got more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the kid sale case was fine. I had enough, and um, so we wanted to talk about what happens when you're losing at yarn chicken. Mm -hmm. So I have to say the very first thing is try not to play yarn chicken in the first place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people, especially if you're making garments, that's the tricky part. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're doing yarn substitution, you have to make kind of a, you have to make a calculation of how much yarn right. you go. And often you, can be it's trickiest when you have like about 20% of a ball that mm -hmm. you know you're only going to use 20% of it yeah and then you're tempted to say mm, can I get by without yeah, yeah the designer probably left a little bit of extra which yeah. they do but yeah it's not worth it no nope. <laughs> the stress of oh I'm gonna run out I'm gonna run out. I'm gonna make it am I gonna run out yeah yeah that's not fun yeah but we all do it yes we all do it yeah yes and also, you have to think a bit about your garment before you start. So I would have had enough yarn, yeah. but I added five inches to the body. So I made an adjustment consciously. It's a cropped top, the the trait in the, right, the way the pattern's written. And I consciously made the decision that I wanted it longer because mm -hmm. I never wear a crop. I should have added the extra yarn then, but I didn't. <laughs> So think about twenty twenty. Yeah, <laughs> think about what you're what you're going to um, if that any kind of modifications that you might want to make if you go up a size or down a size. Some designers are saying the number of grams that you need to make the project. Yeah, and I always find that a little trickier to navigate. Yes, than yardage or meterage. Right, except that if you're like me and always change the gauge of the the you have to think about. Um, you should take the same amount of weight of yarn, but if you're making more stitches, you do need more yardage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think I've got that right. Yeah. Sometimes I That's the way stuff. I see it too. Cause yeah. it's like, if, if you're, if you're looking at it, like there's so many stitches in this little square and you decide to, you know, make your stitches tinier, you are going to use more yardage, yardage, right. Going back and forth. So, I mean, it only stands to reason that you would need extra yardage for, yes your garment right and I mean there's lots of fiddling that you can do to you know make things fit right but yeah and I think that uh, it makes sense because if you use a bigger needle size and have bigger stitches inevitably there's more space between yes. the stitches yeah so the stitches are bigger but there's also more air yeah so you have to add a little bit of extra yardage I think if you're going to do what I do almost every time is make yeah. a denser fabric and that's that's the word right there, density. Yeah. So if you're making a denser fabric, you're going to use more. Yes. Yeah. So Makes sense. It's, it's just so yes. getting your brain around that, right? Right. Yeah. And um, so then let's just say you've lost at Yarn Chicken and you're writing to us. We had two customers this week, yeah. actually. Do you have this in this die lot? Yeah. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. And uh, well, there's two in the shop and one by email. Yeah, we were going around trying to find things. So, and I have to say that, um, well, actually, it's not true what I was about to say. So, hand dyed yarn, there is variation. 
if it rained the day before betsy does the dyeing the ph is different in the water because yes. we, we have well water yeah. and we can see that it changes the color yeah like every spring yes she's going through this where she was she gets kind of annoyed she's like the ph has changed yeah because <laughs> certain colors appear different whenever we've had a lot of rain yeah or if the snow was melting and then she has to adjust she has to adjust so she's yeah. pretty good at adjusting i have she's to say but good. it's kind of unpredictable yeah. a little bit and um and then you may think there might be more consistency with different dye lots from commercial yarns but what i've tried found is that no no it's not any better no it's six of one half a dozen of another exactly yeah. so what do you do if you're think you've gonna run out of yarn the first thing is don't knit to the end of the ball you're knitting on right yeah <laughs> <laughs> try to figure it out before like look at it honestly and yeah. see if you're going to have enough enough yarn or not because there's you have a lot more options if you still have some of your original dye lot left yeah so what would be your favorite option um i like to alternate mm -hmm. but also i've had uh projects in the past where i'm knitting like a top-down sweater and i know that I'm going to run out of like the main color and I usually do sweaters in multiple colors. Right. So one of my little tricks is to do the cuffs. Right. In different colors. Right. So that will save on the yardage. Um, if you do have to buy. And new, if you're top down, you also have the band at the bottom. As exactly. Well. Right. With bottom up, it's a little bit tougher. Yeah. You usually have to kind of, you know, factor these things in. So mm -hmm. if you know you're cutting it close, it might be as simple as, you know, perhaps with a sweater, you either buy more yarn mm -hmm. and alternate. Yeah. Or if you know really early on that you're not going to have enough, shorter sleeves, things yeah. like that. So yeah. go three-quarter length. Right. I like to do that. Yeah. Because it, it fits within the parameters. Right. Yeah. Or even bracelet, like, depending yeah. on how much. So I actually weighed my yarn that I had left. So I knew how many yards that I had. Yeah. And um, so it was 162 yards. So yeah. if I I was I was hoping that I would have enough, but I was pretty sure that I was going to run out. And like I said, it makes sense. I added afterwards. I was like, well, how? Why did I run out exactly? Because I thought I had a little bit of extra yarn, but I added five inches to the body. That's not yeah. insignificant. Yeah, that's like probably a whole ball. Yeah, almost. So. And that be, can be kind of hard to judge sometimes, too, about how much yardage that actually eats up. Yeah. So anytime you do a modification like that, you have to take into account that you will eat through your yardage a lot faster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think that people don't do it because it's it's not often about the budget. It's more that they just, there's kind of cool just to use up the whole yarn. You don't want extra yarn. Yeah. But Simone is the poster child for you you never have any yarn left over um i don't usually have a ton and so you have do, yarn left over but you use it i use it for other things yeah yeah so what are some of your tricks to use up the stash that you have left and you had you mixed different sized yarns and different textures yeah. and everything right I really like feral projects that's okay. one of my favorite things and like hats and cowls and things that are you know, fairly small, you can eat through all the leftover yardage mm -hmm. easily. And you can kind of pay, play fast and loose with those projects too, because they're smaller. So it's less of a time investment if you need to rip back because you ran out of, you know, this particular in the middle, color, of, a in the middle of a row. Okay. Yeah. And then what about if you had, like, usually with Fair Isle, the pattern, you would repeat the colors, but what happens if you, like, how do you judge, how do you judge what colors you're going to assign to what motif do you know what i mean yeah sometimes i close my eyes and i stick my hand in my basket okay, <laughs> okay. so i'll kind of Very have them like grouped in colors and you know so it's like the greens are all here the blues are oh, all here okay. so i'll close my eyes and just pull it out and if it's like really off the wall yeah then i'll pick another one right but Sometimes it's as simple as that. I just kind of, because okay. I do have a lot of bits and bobs. Yeah. Um, and then other things that I like to do is just little knitted, just garter stitch, things like that. So you, you don't really have, my grandmother used to call them scrappy yeah. afghans and stuff like right. that. So you just, as soon as you run out, 
you can join in another color. Oh, okay. And that's something that I'm seeing come back with sweaters and things right. like that. Right. So people are doing these scrappy sweaters where they just, they knit till they run out. They join a new little right. bit and bob. And something else that I've been really, really interested in trying, and I can't believe I haven't done it yet, is the magic ball. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, where right. you wind up so much, and then you join the next color. Right. And then you just knit, and it gradually changes the background. Right. So that's something that I'm going to try down the road. So you organize your balls, and yeah. then you wind them, like if you wanted With to do a color months. change and stuff like that. Yeah. So for this project, you used up yarn that you had left over. I did. So did you make the decision? You knew how much bramble you had. That seems to be the main. You did yeah. two sections in bramble. Yeah. Uh, no, just one. Uh, no, no, there's, there's two. two. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I knew I was going to run out. And I just added the green. Okay. So it's the same motif. Right. Um, here, I'll just take it off. It's the same motif. Uh, it's like a shell stitch. Yeah. And for this one, it just looks like, you know, another stripe. Um, so I got away with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you take chances, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And this was crochet, so I'm a little less precious about it. So if... If I don't like it, I'll just pull it out. Yeah. Because it's so easy to rip back and crochet. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, you know, like tinking back right. and yeah. keeping all those stitches. You can just pull until yes. you want to join a new color. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That is. So maybe crochet projects are a good, a yeah. good if Absolutely. you're really not sure. Yeah. And part of it is just being brave enough to try and make mistakes. Yeah. Because I, I went to the intermediate school and I did a little talk on wool and spinning. Oh, okay. And it was funny because Sherry's like, so you're a creative genius. I said, no, I'm willing to make mistakes. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing is mm -hmm. you have to lose at yarn chicken occasionally yeah. to know how to handle these things. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so don't be afraid of making mistakes. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this before and this is right up there with swatching. Yeah. You know, we need to make mistakes to learn new things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then you do also a lot of mittens and things like that. So how many, how many, um, roughly I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't tell you that I was going to ask this, but how many, um, yards or how much weight of yarn do you not even think about doing mittens unless you have what? Oh, wow. I don't know. Um, or what I'll do a lot of times is I'll go on Ravelry. Okay. And they have, um, one of the filters in the pattern search right? where you can, you know, determine how many right. yards you need for a project. Yeah. So you can pop that in the filter. Yeah. And that's good so you for using that. scraps. Yeah. Yep. And if you don't know how many yards you have left, you just have to weigh it. So if yep. you, as long as you know what your, your yarn, we talk with this math, that is the one piece of math that we use multiple times a day yeah every single day here so when we do yarn substitutions mm -hmm. if you want to you know figure out how much yarn you have left yeah if you know the specs of the yarn when you start it how many grams for how many yards mm. and then you figure out what a yard weighs yeah and then you can do all kinds of calculations yeah. so i knew i had 162 roughly yards left of sock mm -hmm. yarn because i knew what my ball weighed yeah and as for so. mittens it's like Again, you can do the cuff in a different color. Right. And if you're trucking along and you know that you're going to run out for the second mitten, you can introduce another color, do just a neat little peery. Right. And yeah. then continue in a new color and you just match it. Yeah. I've done right. that a lot. I've done that with socks. Okay. So do you weigh, um, do you weigh yarn for, uh, and then split it in half? Nope. Oh, okay. I'll weigh it and eyeball it and see if I can get away with it. Okay. <laughs> But I know exactly half, so I do have in my notebook because I, I keep a knitter's notebook. Yes, she does. And I write down the weight of the yarn. How you, what you start it with. Yeah, okay. so I know where the half waypoint is. Okay. So I can weigh partway through and make sure that I have enough to complete the other half. Right. Um, and that makes me a little bit more confident to, like, fudge the right the yarn choices yeah. and stuff like because that. it does get a little bit tricky if you're just eyeballing it because as the ball gets smaller it's harder to know yes like vis-a-vis -vis the big big ball going around a big circumference yeah. and then a, the little one so yeah you yeah you could it takes us back to grade eight geometry yeah 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. who, who wants to talk about that? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah. Yeah. And is there anything else that um, we wanted to say about that? I think that that was, yeah. that was it. So do your best to guess and you might need more than you had originally anticipated. Right. You can do tons of fun projects with leftovers. So yeah. if leftovers are your concern, yeah. you know, Ravelry's full of fun projects right. that you can use your scraps up with. Um, if you don't want to buy that extra ball, um, you may have to alternate skeins. Or make shorter sleeves. Yep. Or do a crop top when you wanted something longer. That's not happening. No. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> no, I keep making sourdough bread. It's going to be getting bigger and bigger. But the sweaters are going to become bigger. We and bigger. will have little dough bakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> we yeah. might have had sourdough pizza on uh, Sunday. Oh, yeah. I've been yeah. making sourdough bread. And Ken's been making muffins with the discards and everything. So, uh, I was yeah. afraid that we would lose the power, which we did. Yeah. And... I thought that was a good judgment call because I did the pizza dough, which was faster. Oh, okay. So I still had my sourdough Sunday. It was just the pizza edition instead of the bread. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, that's that. Yep. So try not to lo try not to play yarn chicken. Yeah. Don't be afraid if you have leftovers and if it, you don't want to have a stash of a hundred little balls or whatever, then yeah. do projects that you can just fudge. Also, like the, like the hats, like we were doing. If you don't want to have a thousand little balls of you know bits and bobs you can always talk to your local senior center and see if it's something that they would be interested in yeah um if, if it's not something that you want to use yourself like there's lots of places mm -hmm. that will take yarn donations yeah so there's it's not going community to waste. school classes yeah and Belfast school they did the knitting program yeah and, yeah exactly. so yeah there's all sorts of uses for your little little bits and bobs yeah yeah great okay and um so i was going to talk about the fiber festival next but then i realized that i forgot we forgot to talk about your spinning oh i forgot. i forgot too yeah okay so simone did do some spinning it's not a huge amount okay but yes there and well see how much i have left sorry for the bag i should have been more prepared and <laughs> Had it taken out, so this is just blows me away that this this is the fiber that makes this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we show. So is this all you have left of the first half? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm still trucking away on the first half of the fiber. Right. I have the second half all okay Ready wound up. Yeah, and that's that's a quarter of the the braid there, and I love the little yeah flax and and silk yeah pops yeah it's beautiful okay so that's you're just continuing on yeah. with that so it's amazing not a huge progress but getting there and this is going to eventually be a traveler shawl that's oh, the plan. right yes yeah. mm -hmm. excellent yeah okay so for the fiber fe festival um i just want to talk about that for a few minutes mm -hmm. So the tickets have gone on sale and um, they, there's a couple, we had our first sellout class already. So it was actually Margaret McEachran from, she's local here doing brioche. So congratulations to Margaret That's and great. congratulations to the, all the people that got the class that they wanted. Yep. So they're starting to sell, sell out. So the Fiber Festival will, will be taking place in Charlottetown on October 3rd to the 5th. And we actually have quite a few more classes than we had last year. So we already talked about Sue Matten. So she's mm -hmm. doing three classes, two of the color work and one actual crochet instruction class. Um, I think Margaret has another class. Your class is more than half sold out, which yep. is drop spin link. Yep. Um, so Simone is the beginner class. Yes. So you make your spindle yep. and then you learn to spin with it. We have another instructor doing spindling, um, spindling classes as well. So yeah. this is kind of like the next Lorna steps. Ash yep. is next steps in drop spindling. Yep. So um, if you already know the basics mm -hmm. and then want to up your game a little bit with the drop spindle, then Lorna's class is um, good for that. And then she's also doing support spindling. I'm very excited that she's teaching this because it's... Yeah. It's something that's huge on the internet right yes. now. Yeah. Lots of people are taking this up. So I yeah. hope that people, 
you know, jump on this as well, because if we play our cards right, yeah, Scott from Fox Mountain Pendles will also have some beautiful support spindles for sale. He's a vendor, yeah, yep. at, the, at the, <laughs> the Fiber Festival. So if you're curious, this would be an excellent class to take. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and we talked about this already, but uh, support spindling is a little bit more tricky than yes. the drop spindle. So yep. it does kind of go in, in order. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We also have, um, for the first time, we have some wet felting classes as well. And uh, there's two of those, I think. I'm, and we had to, it was like, we wanted to make sure that they could be held at the hotel because yes. the, there was going to be water <laughs> involved, but that's okay. So we got that all worked out. And um, so we have a, quite a few felting classes, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, Lisa Freeman from the Messy Crow Studio here in Prince Edward Island has a couple classes. We have um, a lady coming from, uh, I think she's from Nova Scotia, and she's actually doing a class on armature. So the making movable oh, cool. things and stuff. So there's a little bit of a trick to getting those wires and stuff inside mm -hmm. your felted uh, people and animals and things like that. So yeah. there's going to be a class about that. So that that's should be really good. cool. Yeah. So again, taking your felting to the next mm -hmm. level. And of course, um, we have lots of knitting classes yeah. and uh, crochet classes as other crochet classes. And we have um, three special events, which is really cool. Uh, well, actually four special events. So fruity knitting is coming. So mm -hmm. Madeline and Andrea are coming and um, hopefully you won't mind being an early riser because they're having breakfast with their, they're hosting a breakfast where there's a little bit of a chat and you can mm -hmm. ask questions and things like that. So that there's a, a, the fruity knitting breakfast. We also have Kirk Dunn coming. So Kurt Dunn is the knitting pilgrim and he is bringing his one man show to the fiber festival and if you're not familiar with what kirk has done but he's knit i think it took him 15 years to complete the the project he's knit three mosaic panels which actually look like stained glass windows mm -hmm. they're just gorgeous and he is um talking about the history of the three abrahamic religions so the Christian faith, the Jewish faith, and the the Muslim faith, and he tells the story of those three faiths in in this mosaic that he did, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and he's also teaching a class on um, color theory and things. So when you see these panels, you I mean it's just they're they're it's they're awesome. Like yeah. they're just awesome. you just sure. want it. Yeah. So there's um and they made his lecture so that there's no other workshops happening at the same time as his lecture so that everybody that wants to do a workshop can have the opportunity to see this uh the special presentation that mm -hmm. he does and we have um we have a evening of culture and richard wood is a pretty famous fiddler mm -hmm. he's not a violinist he's a fiddler so he yeah. actually can play classical violin too i think but he um is doing an evening which is going to be um based on either a kitchen party or a kaylee that you would have around here in the maritimes so in with the maritime there's obviously a huge irish and scottish um culture here because mm -hmm. based on those were some of the first settlers that came came here and Richard actually does a couple different styles of fiddling. So he's also can do Acadian fiddling is one thing. Cape Breton fiddling is mm -hmm. fiddling is another thing. And so he's pretty a jack of all trades as far as that goes. Yeah. But at this event, he's going to be um, uh, concentrating on the Cape Breton style. And uh, there's all, that style is also here on Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. But since my family's from Cape Breton originally, I, I just <laughs> It's the one I know the best. But there's um, actually dancing that happens at these Kayleys in Cape Breton. I don't know if it happens here. Uh, I don't remember. I was little when we went. Okay. Yeah. So they're called square sets, but they're not. it's not square dancing like you think of with the big skirts and do -si doing and things like that. It's kind of like a reel that you do. And you have a collar, and he tells you how to, how to move. 
And um, it's really funny because my aunt was managed a really popular Kaylee in Cape Breton in Bedeck. And she always had a square set in the middle, like it's sometime in the, in the program. And inevitably people that have never done it before, they ended up in a big pile in the middle of the floor. <laughs> You forget which way you're supposed to go, and <laughs> that's the fun of it. Yeah, but you need a couple people that actually know what they're doing because otherwise it's just a hilarious big mess. <laughs> so we have a really quite a well-known caller coming as well to the Fiber Festival to keep everybody straight. So okay. that will be part of the. the that sounds night. like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. <laughs> So those are kind of some of the other different activities that are that are happening around the, the Fiber Festival. There's a newsletter for the PEI Fiber Festival. So if you want to um, sign up for that, you're, you'll get a letter uh, just as things progress and more information and that kind of thing. So I think that's it. I think so. Yeah. I think we were able to talk quite a lot. Even <laughs> <laughs> the two of us, even though we didn't have Betsy with her. Great questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep, keeping us uh, keeping us going. <laughs> so we're going to go over to the Harmony part. I have here that it's a walk in the woods, but as you know, with the Harmony part, it could be anything by the time I get there. But yeah. for the one thing for sure, it'll be there'll be some music behind it. So with that, uh, we hope that you have a great two weeks till mm -hmm. we see you the next time. Unless you're watching the Harmony Reads podcast as well. And yeah. that's uh, happening next week, next Friday. And uh, thank you for joining us. And I hope your crafting brings you joy, whatever it is you're doing for the next two weeks. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <music>
Thank you.